today we will be discussing effective training styles for adults as well as um, how adults learn. This presentation is for an Introduction to Presentation Design course at Texas A&M University Commerce, which is conducted by Dr. Rick Lumadu. I am Misha Slade, your presenter, so please come with me through this investigation of how we as teachers train and how adults learn. For the purpose of this lesson and to grasp the content provided from the graduate class, we will focus on the training styles presented in the text by Jean Barbazet, The Art of Great Training and Delivery. The objectives for today are basically to learn about the four training styles and really analyze what each consists of and how, as a trainer, you can relate to each style. We will also study adult learning styles and why adults desire learning. Through this, my hope is to design strategies to use in the training classroom in order to teach adults effectively. One of the most important aspects of training is to know how you train. That information gives great insight on how you should enhance or improve your training to meet the needs of all learners. There are a variety of assessments available to you on the internet, and I've also provided some samples for you in the resources section of my web page. Bart Bazette says, since a different style is best used with each of the five adult learning sets, which we will discuss later, being able to use a range of all four styles is ideal. It is important to adapt and find flexibility in training, hence using all four styles. The instructor is the first of the four training styles we will discuss today. The instructor enjoys setting up the learning environment. They're comfortable telling the learners what to do. Um, they're self-confident. They concentrate on one item at a time. The instructor is effective in lecture teaching and tries to control learner participation. Advantages of being the instructor include um, technical trainers, which are people who are subject matter experts, where it's easy for them to offer knowledge and experience in their area. They set clear directions and ground rules. Basically, they tell the learners what they will learn and benefits of learning that information and then do just that. They're very to the point and concise. However, there are disadvantages for overuse of this type of training, and those include uh, the instructor may ignore personal experiences to get the information across. This will limit the amount of participation, especially in adult learning class, due to the fact that many learners do not learn well just by listening. The instructor needs to change um, and manage the amount of talking and add listening to their agenda as well. There are also disadvantages for overuse of this type of training, which include when one does, does not use the method at all. They may struggle with classroom management because their directions are not clear and learners may find frustration in the lack of direction. Sometimes they need just a little more foundation, especially when they have no background in that specific area. A trainer who uses the Explorer style allows learners to share and interpret reactions to a learning activity. He or she is a good listener and encourages free expression, which in turn allows for a safe and open learning environment. The trainer is very aware of nonverbal cues and shows great concern for feelings and emotions of learners. Getting through the material is not the top priority of the Explorer. They are more concerned with self-directed learning. Advantages of the Explorer style may include the fact that many trainers have good interpersonal skills with the Explorer training, um, Explorer style training. They also allow time for sharing of personal insight and experiences, which makes learners feel validated and accepted. All of these in turn allow for a positive learning environment. Disadvantages, however, for overuse include the idea that some people really do not like to share their personal reactions or feelings on learning experiences especially when the experience was maybe negative for them. If a learner does not participate in the discussion, they can easily be overlooked, which I like to call hide under the radar. 
This strategy could also be seen as intrusive and learners may get offended in the high interest level of the trainer in regards to their personal life and situation. Disadvantages for underusing this strategy include the fact that there must be enough reflection time for one to consider what's to be learned during the activity or the lesson. Adults need time to reflect on what happened. They do not like to be told what's supposed to happen or what should have happened in the activity or situation. The thinker focuses on ideas and thoughts rather than feelings and emotions. Independent thinking is encouraged and the trainer is often an observer in the learning activities. They then assist learners in making connections between past and present, identifying concepts from the learner reactions. Advantages in the thinker style um, include abstract thinkers. They love this learning style because the trainer helps them take their own experiences and create concepts out of them. They also enjoy the mental exercise of discussion of ideas. Disadvantages include when overused, the fact that those who are not abstract thinkers will have a hard time understanding what's going on in the class or the training. Some practical learners may get frustrated and want to move forward quicker to find out how the ideas can be used rather than continuing to discuss the ideas in detail. Disadvantages of underuse include learners um, who have a hard time applying this to their own learning if they're not used to taking the experiences and making new concepts out of them. I am one of these learners that would really struggle with the thinker style. I am not an abstract thinker. I like to move forward and talk more about strategies and discussing how to use, how to use um, strategies rather than discussing the strategies themselves. The guide is my favorite style to discuss because as a trainer and a teacher, I am a guide. This is my preferred style of training, so much so that it seems that areas lack in flexibility, something we're going to discuss in more detail in the next few slides. A guide helps learners apply strategies to their learning and teaching. They use activities, problem-solving techniques, and discussions in order to, to teach and to learn. Guides allow learners to self-assess their own progress, and basically this means the guide is a facilitator rather than a trainer who likes to find ways to practically problem-solve real-life situations. Active participation is encouraged and necessary for this type of training. Advantages from the guide style are for practical learners who like to link their training to real-life situations. It's a strong motivator for learners to take strategies from one activity and create many uses even on the job training. Disadvantages, if it's overused, um, the, the rush to get to the learning point is a disadvantage. A guide likes to move very quickly and get to the point, and learners may not understand everything getting to the end point. Disadvantages, if it's underused, affect real-world learners because they find learning too academic and less attractive, therefore resulting in boredom in the learning. It's important to be flexible and enhance your other training styles. Balance should really be the goal here. It's important that you find that balance with each training style in order to meet the needs of each student. The goal of the trainer is to come within eight points of each style. So figure out which style you want to improve and use the following strategies to enhance that specific style. To improve the instructor style, describe the activity and tell learners what they are about to do. Also. Set guidelines for learners to follow while they're completing the learning activity. Explorers should ask questions that allow learners to interpret their reactions to the specific learning activity. Thinkers need to generalize concepts from the activity and to guide learners, ask them to relate their experiences to their work and life. It is important to be considerate and patient with adult learners as many are taking great risks to gain more education. It takes a leap of faith to learn something new and or change old habits. Homer Simpson can relate. Adults have a desire to learn, sometimes more than children. 
Our society has become so that teachers are creating lifelong learners. The motivation to learn has increased as jobs change, the economy changes, and expectations for education change. Watch this video in YouTube and get a glimpse of just what I'm talking about. I find it very interesting that adults learn just like the younger students we teach by feeling, watching, thinking, and doing. Just because we're older doesn't necessarily mean our way of learning has changed. Adults have more life experiences and knowledge to add to the learning, and one may be more flexible in how they learn due to the amount of time they've spent learning, but overall there's usually one way of learning that's better for an individual than another. It's your job as a trainer to meet those needs and try to create activities that engage all learners. This is a great chart by David Richards regarding Kolb's learning styles for adults. The chart demonstrates the continuation of learning through feeling, watching, thinking, and doing. The link provided will take you to a great web blog for training and learning tips by David Richards. There are five steps to guide adult learners. These steps provide for the maximum learning to take place from the learning outcomes. They address all the learning styles and give adults a sense of comfort in the learning environment. The first step in guiding adult learning is to set up the learning activity. It's important for adult learners to understand what they're required to accomplish, why the activity is important to their learning, and how the object objective is going to be met. As the trainer, you set the ground rules and make sure directions are clear to avoid confusion. Be sure to answer any questions and then create the groups for adults to work collaboratively. The second step in training adults is to try to involve all learners through participation. This is where you need to determine the learning styles and adapt to the class. You might want to use case studies through reading or role play through acting. Ask for background knowledge to get participants to share ideas or experiences. Create assignments to be completed in each group where each member has a role. You could even use a video to create discussion. Whatever it is, try to get all members involved so they feel part of the learning environment. The third step in the adult learning process is to share and interpret the information that has just been learned. It's one of the most important because the learners actually think about the activity they just completed and reflect on their learning. This is a time where learners need to share the reactions with the small group and the whole group. They need to think about and share how their behavior affected the group and how their opinions may or may not have changed. As a trainer or facilitator, you may want to ask questions at this point to get the minds going. Sometimes it's better to have participants write down what they thought about the activity before discussing with the whole group so others do not influence their thinking. This step must be taken for any conclusions to be made so that the unfinished business does not affect further activities. Step four, identify concepts cannot be left out or the learning will be incomplete. A takeoff from step three, the learners must identify what they have learned. Try not to tell them what they've learned or what they should have found because adults all learn differently and they enjoy discovering on their own. It's okay, however, to ask specific questions regarding the training. For example, what did you learn about behavior management? Adults have many experiences and ways to apply the information, which takes us to our final step. Application to life is the final step and what I believe to be the most important. Learners need to think about how to apply the learning to their life. The trainer should ask questions at this point and learners should think, write, and respond to what they will do with the training they receive. The learners need to see they can make a connection between their life and their learning. This will allow them to see benefits from the training and feel their time is appreciated. Let's review our objectives for the day to verify that we covered all the components desired. We analyzed the four training styles, instructor, explorer, thinker, and guide, 
and determine that being flexible in each style is key. We talked about learning styles, feeling, watching, thinking, and doing, and how to address each learning style through the five steps to teach adults effectively. In conclusion, many adults desire learning and they have much to share from their own lives. Be reminded that we can all learn from each other when we have open minds and hearts. When you train adults, review the training styles presented here and try to be flexible with your strategies and techniques. Also, remember that adults learn in five steps and have patience in guiding them as, as learners. Finally, have fun. Learning should be fun, any way it's accomplished.